Hello, good morning. Listen, I don't know about you guys, right? But there's just something incredible for me that when you expect something of the Lord in terms of, Lord, what are we talking about this morning? Lord, what is my lesson for this morning? Lord, what is the goal you have set for me for today? What are we, what are we walking? What are we talking about today? What's happening? And there's just something incredible that comes in when God booms you with something. He just goes, wah, there it is. You know, it, it happens from time to time, and, and it hit me differently this morning. That when I when I get ready in the mornings and I converse with God, I'm like, God, what is it? What is that we're chatting about this morning? And all these ideas go through my head. You know, it's like a, you know, those uh, those bingo, uh, little, the ball machines of the bingo that the people use. Coffee keys can stand in your Those 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 bingo ball machines that they so turn moss and then and then they pull the balls out of there. It, it, it feels like that almost in the morning that my mind goes through because it's almost like I'm recapping because I realize every single day that I'm walking at the moment, that day prepares me for the message that, that I get to share in the morning. But, but more importantly, that's the message for me, as I so often say. And it's so, so that, that little bingo ball rotation gree is uh <laughs> is all the all the events or all the yeah all the events and all the things that have occurred the previous day running through my head you know conversations that i've had things that i've been to like last night we had, we had our life group again and we had the, the incredible opportunity or i the, i definitely see it as an incredible opportunity to support a fellow believer who's going through an incredibly tough time he's having a hard time in your life and what that reminded me of, which brings me to today, is like the things we go through. Because I was able to get myself exactly on this person's level because he feels, and the more he spoke, the more I felt I can relate to exactly how this guy felt about where he is at his workplace. He, that is, that is fed up you know he's done he's got nothing left everything he does doesn't seem to work out it feels like everyone that has decisions over him even people that work with him just makes life terrible that he wants out he wants to get away but through it all he still manages to say you know what still though that's where god needs me to be then i must be there so what we go through what we went through is such an important thing that I didn't realize my I, I knew God was equipping me through that season but also teaching me to be different in the season and now I had the opportunity to sit somewhere last night and go Yo, Lord this is what that equipped me for is to sit here and feel exactly what those people feel when they go through these type of situations look not your situations is alike but I have a very good idea and I was able to encourage us, you know, that's what brings to importance also who is around you. Where do you spend your time? Because who's around you in a time like this, I could see, even though we didn't do anything about his actual situation yet, by the time we finished our life group last night, I could see that I had some stuff off his shoulders already. He already looked like he was smiling a little bit more. His eyes started smiling a little bit more. And that's the importance of those around you who can encourage you, who can... And that's why two heads are better than one, because the other person sees stuff that you can't, especially people out of the box. You've got to be able to receive those messages as well, though, because it's not criticism. And the messages can come sometimes come through hard. There was a stage where I said to him, like, yes, you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling with you what I felt in my, when I went through this a couple of years ago, is that that lion that's inside of you is dormant. It is sleeping. And... You know, through all of that, we are reminded through the word of not only who we are, but who God is. And that he's always with us. That he's gone before us. He prepares a table, the word says. Just a couple of scriptures that popped up this morning that I that didn't even come through through yet last night. But we had some great ones last night. We were, we were a few people, so some great scripture came through. And Isaiah 41.10 stands out first thing this morning for, for you. If that's you, if that's your situation, that it's a, that you're in a situation that... You don't know what to do anymore. You can't. You're praying. You're crying out to God. You, you're in church. You go to life. You speak to people and you're just not getting there yet. Oh, if I have the opportunity and, and it's me that gets to remind you today, it's such an incredible privilege for me to do this. 
So let's see if this word is for you then. It must be. Because Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God's got you, my friend, in your situation. And this is equipping you for tomorrow. The situation or the chance that I have to sit here and be on this side. John 16, what a one, what a promise in verse 33. It says, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. We will have challenges and troubles in the world, we will. But in God we will have peace. But then Jesus comes and says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So Jesus already beat all this stuff. You know, people always say that fear is, is a, an abbreviation for false evidence appearing real. That word false there is something you need to remember because it's just false stuff. It's manipulation that the enemy is bringing to sidetrack you, to distract you, to get you to a space of getting fed up, to get you to a place where you feel like a loser. But I remind you today that you are a victor, my friend. 1 Peter 5 was another one that just jumped out at me this morning. In verse 10, it says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So God settles you when you get through this stuff. And then, as we, as I'm also reminded now in this moment about how God said, if Solomon walks and obeys my commandments and what I've set out for him, I will bless him, I will establish him. Stay strong, my friend. Take hold. Keep that stuff. Keep those promises. You know, people often say that the valleys that we're in teach us, teaches us stuff that the mountains never will. And I find that to be very, very true. But these hardships are to equip you, to strengthen you, to get that grit, that tenacity that we meant to have. It, it builds that stuff up because you are strong. You can make it. You will make it. God has the answer for you. You just need the right person to give you the right piece of rope. So you can see where the exit lies. Remember, we've said a few times, and the Bible also said that, you know, God provides an exit for the, for the stuff that happens. He makes one. He doesn't bring all the challenges. He doesn't bring the attacks. That's the enemy trying to distract you, get you away from. And the harder the attacks, or the hardest attacks also comes just before your breakthrough. So push, my friend. If you've got that towel in your hand, you throw it in. Don't you dare throw it in. You use that towel, wipe your gesichie da, vier de traankies af, en is nollies, en make skoon he. Toss that towel away and then you give it all you've got because you're a victor. I want to remind you this morning of who you are because the Bible tells you you are the first and not the last. You are the head. You are not the tail. You're a victor. You are a prince and a princess of the Almighty because you're a son and you're a daughter of the Almighty King. Man, you're a son and you're a daughter of the living God. You're a co-heir of Jesus. The position that you have, the fact that God knew you before he made you. In the beginning when he made everything, he knew exactly when you were going to be around. All the hairs on your head are counted for a reason. Because God is a God of details. He likes what's in the detail. A man that he put the details in you. So you've got what you need. You've got what it takes to beat this thing. This thing that's in your life. Whatever it is that you're going through. And whatever it is that you are going through, remember that in Romans 8 verse 28, God says for all things, God will work all things for the good of those who love him. For those who are called according to, your, to, to his purpose. You are called for a purpose, my friend. And this challenge is busy shaping you. It's busy equipping you for something big, something massive. So if you're sitting there and you're fed up and you're tired and you're moog and you're schatful and you're, you've had enough, Man, I, I pray that God reminds you. He lets the thing falls off your eyes and your ears so you can see what he needs to show you, hear what, he need, what you need to hear, realize what you need to realize, open up your mind, and then you wake up that lion, my friend, and then you attack that thing head on. You've got this. God's got you, and you've got this.